Okay, uh, assalamu alaikum. My name is Dr. Suhal Naimi, and I'm one of the employees at the University of Sharjah at the College of Medicine. Um, my my specialty is pathology, but I'm, I have a keen interest in obviously obesity and its related issue. So obviously, obesity today is a worldwide epidemic. Thousands of people die each year uh, because of uh, obesity, and as we know, obesity is a uh, obviously uh, the increase in uh, body mass index itself, and where it, uh, the BMI could actually reach 30 or so or greater. However, believe it or not, obesity is the excessive of abnormal accumulation of fat, which is linked with the mild chronic inflammation. So for me, when I look at any patients with obesity, I really do look at the inflammation part and that how, uh, you know, obesity led to chronic inflammation and it's a mild one as well. The word chronic means obviously is a lifelong, uh, t uh, you know, a treatment requirement requirement because it really could lead to some kind of problems like hypertension, diabetes, asthma, and so. Obviously, uh, the treatment we could control the situation, but unfortunately, we can't cure the disease. So. Obviously, it's for us in terms of preventing obesity, we need to control how everything needs to be done to not to reach that situation. Uh, obviously, it's a, not a short term solution. And um, if we stopped treating or dealing with the situation, you know, uh, some kind of withdrawal could happen. So we could go back uh, to, to, you know, first step. Uh, so, as I said, uh, one of the way to measure obesity is a body mass index. And I have a, an idea that you you possibly know what that means. So it's in adults. We have the BMI is usually we look at the weight and the height and we measure that method from this, um, uh, you know, uh, measurement. So obviously overweight is when an individual could exceed a, a specific kind of BMI. So anything 25 kilograms per uh, uh, meter square to 29.9 meter uh, kilogram to meter square means that the person is an overweight. Anything above, so any Anything uh, with the BMI of 30, it uh, could actually uh, give and consider a person is obese. Obviously, the problem is with using this uh, tool is a bit of a crude uh, tool because we are relying on a height and weight. And sometimes you could see uh, some uh, gentlemen uh, where they have more muscles uh, rather than fat. And despite, you know, the height and weight, uh, maybe it's not a good representation for uh, from one individual or another. However, this is what we use for, uh, you know, for dealing um, in terms of measuring obesity. And obviously you could see the scales in terms of what do we consider an overweight? And actually, within the obesity itself, uh, we have we spe specify them to, you know, um, from moderate to a, uh, you know, uh, morbidly obese patients. And obviously, it shows and highlights some of the heights, uh, some of the uh, weights, and how we consider a patient or, or an individual with their BMI and where do they sit in that category, really. So this is just to highlight, you know, we can, we can look at an, uh, patients with obesity or overweight through the, these BMI or even a healthy individual as well. Anything below 25, obviously they sit within the healthy thing. And actually anything be below a, a specific, you know, 18 or so that it could be an underweight as well and an underweight individual uh, could be in a in a in a, a critical situation as well 
However, nowadays, and NICE NICE recommended that despite the use of BMI, we could actually use the waist circum uh, circumference as well uh, to measure, you know, a per person with overweight and obesity uh, and to determine, you know, the, the, the health risk. So obviously, uh, uh, for male and women, we could uh, basically consider Sorry, I did not push anything, but it just changed itself. So I would say uh, for uh, men, you know, uh, you know, for uh, waist circumferences, usually we say 94 centimeters, uh, uh, you know, that is the desirable, that is what we think is a, a person who's less than 94 centimetres or so, or 37 inch, it's desirable, is a healthy individual. However, if it's high between 94 to 102, that is basically a person with a high uh, waist circumference and it could give us, you know, maybe they are in the overweight kind of thing. Very high is anything more than 102 centimetres or more than 40 inch. Again, with the female as well, it could, um, you know, uh, le anything less than 80 centimetres is within the high, uh, anything between the 80 to 88 uh, eight centimetres, it, it's high, but obviously it, it gives us that a person is possibly in the overweight kind of situation and anything more than 88 centimeters or more than 34 inches is obviously very high it could be considered as an obese um obviously um over the past years in the United Arab Emirates, there is obviously the prevalence of overweight and obesity which suggests uh, it has at least doubled uh, you know, from 1989 to 2017. So, Emirati population, for example, men, there are 38.5% living with overweight and 32.2% living with obesity. However, with women, you have 29.3% living with overweight and 41.8% living with obesity. So it's really increasing and you could see it's increased the last, you know, uh, uh, 20 years or so. And uh, obviously that became a, a burden to um, the United Arab Emirates kind of health centers and health services because it, economically it's spending around six billion US uh, annually. But what they thought uh, found as well that, you know, if you have children with people with obese, they will have the chance of 75% of being obese, these children. However, when you have two uh, parents which are more of a lean people, the children will have only 10% to become obese. So you could tell there is some kind of genetic factors related to obesity itself. And uh, you could see, you know, the obesity uh, prevalence is not only in United Arab Emirates, but in Arab countries in general. And you could see, like, apart from, as I said, in um, uh, Emirates and United Arab Emirates itself, 31.7% obesity, you could say, see, you know, Kuwait, it sits in the higher top kind of end, uh, like Saudi as well, and, um, you know, Jordan. But obviously, and uh, Qatar, but obviously you could see, you know, other countries, uh, again, it's, you know, exceeding the 30% and so. So, that is a study in, uh, was included in around 2,142 adults aged 18 years and uh, older, showing that in, in uh, Emirates is, uh, itself, uh, that uh, basically, uh, BMI with 30 and more uh, was 17%, okay? And the higher obesity rates were among women as well. So, you know, that is alarming really in terms of how it's increasing. And it's not only in adults, but even in childhood obesity, it was increasing quickly in United Arab Emirates from 12% of 
children in in basically 2018 to 17 point four percent in 2020 and obviously um they seen that one in five children there were in reception and one in three children they were in year six which measured obese or overweight so another alarming thing uh, and it seems like since the 1993 uh, the morbid obesity, and I told you that anything above the 40 BMI, they are considered as morbid obesity, it reached 2% in men and 4% in women. So it's becoming, you know, a, an issue that obesity, uh, not only in United Arab Emirates as such, but it's a world uh, worldwide uh, epidemic, I would call it. And it's uh, considered an issue that we need to deal with. Uh, so obviously we know with obesity it's about uh, the nutrients and the energy uh, expenditure so how much we take in and the energy intake that comes from nutrients from uh, how much we eat and how much we could uh, energy expenditure so how much we 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 get rid of and that is due to the, the exercise we do and so so it seems like when there is a high storage of capacity we have, so when we have energy intake or we eat a lot without actually uh, exercising as much, could accumulate these adipocytes. And obviously when I say adipocytes, I'm talking about the fat cells themselves. So adipocytes uh, exceed, it means the fat cells will uh, will increase. And they not only increase in, in size, which what we call hypertrophy, but actually they increase in number as well. And the, that is what we call hyperplasia. And is not only the adipocytes like the fat cells themselves will increase but actually the the other cells which are within the adipose uh, tissue uh, in general and you'll say uh, doctor what is the difference between an a fat cell and adipocytes and an adipose tissue so in general this is the difference so the adipocytes or the fat cells that include you know the fat cells and how they the fat is accumulated but the tissue in general you will find other type of cells like for example white blood cells and white blood cells like macrophages you know the leukocytes and um, other bits and pieces which they play a big role in making obesity is not only the fat accumulation and the uh, you know the adipocytes themselves what they do but is actually they uh, they they inflammation and the forming uh, these inflammatory markers which combines with obesity through these leukocytes and these white blood cells and these kind of macrophages so it's that is what happens really Obviously, there are a lot of patients who come to us saying like, you know, I feel I'm good. Yes, I am obese, but I am metabolically healthy and I really have no issue there. The thing is, we have uh, two type of fat that we have in our body. So we have the subcutaneous and the uh, visceral fat. And this is why people with subcutaneous fat, so they look big but actually the visceral fat is not as big that show us that these people are metabolically health obese patients and that is so important but it seems like despite they are at that moment metabolically healthy obese patients or individuals because of that subcutaneous fat rather than the visceral fat in long term uh, it's shown that these these healthy metabolic obese individuals, despite they are healthy at the moment, they actually could uh, end up having abnormal remodeling of these adipocytes and adipose tissue, which can uh, 
interfere with some of the hormones, some of the markers, which we call them inflammatory markers in the form of cytokines. This is what we call them really, which really they are there to give us that inflammation. Okay. Um, so we have, and you know, our fat tissue could be a brown adipose tissue or a white adipose tissue. So uh, I don't know. For you guys, when you look at uh, the, the any individual which is obese, you will appreciate that we have a high level of white adipose tissue. And that white adipose tissue, the, 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 you know, the cells are the adipocytes which accumulate the fat within them. However, we have another type of adipose tissue called the brown one. And the brown one is basically there for uh, for when we feel there, you know, uh, the heat or the coldness. So basically, they are thermogenic kind of fat tissue. So brown adipose tissue are stand for, uh, and they look brown because there is a specific organelles found within these cells called mitochondria, and these mitochondria help in basically browning these adipocytes or these cells, and they actually have the, uh, you know, uh, the importance in us feeling the cold in a way and maintaining our temperature without even shivering, so it helps in the thermogenesis really in general. So this is really the difference you see. This is the white adipose tissue and you could see how the fat accumulate in one side, shifting the nucleus of the cell in, in one side. However, look at the brown adipocytes. Uh, so these are, it's, it's a fat cell still. And what we see, this is the green thing is the nucleus. And you have a lot of mitochondria gathered in there, which is giving it that brownish coloration. And because of that high level of Microfile, uh, sorry, uh, mitochondria. It's actually mitochondria is has a functionality to keep us, um, you know, warm uh, whatever uh, weather we 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 exposed to. So, and that is really what what is the browning of adipocytes or the brown of uh, brown adipocytes. But can you see these yellow uh, dots here and there? These yellow dots are they uh, the fat? droplets themselves okay so obviously th these brown adipocytes or adipose tissue it was known to to have more uh, available in 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 younger kids and babies really and this is why mums sometimes they put their babies outside uh, and I'm talking about people in a cold uh, co live in a cold weather they leave their kids outside or babies outside they are only 40 40 days or so and this is why because you they have these brown adipose tissue and this gives them that thermogenesis so it Kim keeps them warm during, uh, you know, uh, during this winter time. But what they found actually, even an adult, they are present. So uh, it seems like as we get older, the baby get older, these brown adipose, uh, uh, these brown adipose tissue will decline. And what happens as we get older, you know, we'll have only specific areas where you have a brown adipose tissue. And they are situated either in the neck, in an area near your clavicle, so your collarbone, which we call it subclavicle region, you will find them in basically in the mid-sternum, which is here where your aorta here, and some other uh, renal areas that we call sub suprarenal area. And here, look at that. If I show you a CT scan of a PET scan, let's say, of an individual, so that same individual you will see when they are exposed to a cold exposure you could see the these uh, brown fat is started showing because it's becoming activated and that is a good uh, kind of uh, evidence of these brown adipose tissue are present in our body and they are the good ones 
they are really good ones, these brown adipositas, so because they play a role in our thermogenesis. And however, look at a, per, a patient with or a person with it, which is an overweight, even if they are exposed to that cold exposure, you will see there is the presence of these brown adipose tissue are much less. Okay. Obviously, you know, when we talk about obesity, we talk about white adipose tissue in general. And, you know, when I was a medic student and in the 1994, they actually discovered that leptin is one of the things that our adipose tissue uh, really uh, secretes. So it gave that adipose tissue or the, you know, the fat itself, the white adipose tissue, it's not only there as an energy storage organ, but it's there as an endocrine uh, organ in general. Why? Because it secretes hormones and it secretes the first one, which has been recognized as leptin. But apart from leptin, it actually, they found to, to, the, to that date, they found that there are plethora. They find like they are almost 500, uh, you know, proteins, factors this adipocyte could secrete. So apart in terms of its functionality, yes, we know uh, it is a fuel storage. It helps in the thermal and mechanical insulation. It play a role in our glucose tolerance. It has an immune and inflammatory response. But the good thing about our white adipose tissue, it's an endocrine uh, organ and, uh, you know, secrete proteins. And so, however, as a negative, really it could lead to obesity so despite its presence it, it has an importance and this is why essential fat it's always essential from its name it's essential because we need it we have to have that essential fat so getting rid of an essential fat is not good for any individual because despite the white adipose tissue or the adipose tissue could lead to obesity but you could see how other positive factors to these um, fat uh, cells could help uh, in our uh, body in general. So this is just to give you some examples of what they this fat cell produce. So apart from leptin, I don't know if you heard about leptin, but leptin is uh, one kind of um, hormone which regulates the body weight and it's important of, uh, for energy storage. It actually helps the persons to maintain a, a, a moderate body weight. So that is the leptin. But you have other uh, pro-inflammatory markers like, you know, this TNF-alpha and interleukin-6. These guys are, uh, you know, inf you know, inflammatory markers. Uh, again, like MCP1 and MEF, they are uh, chemokines. You have some some of them play in our immune system in our complementary pathway, like Edipson and PIA1. Obviously, there are some of them play in our vascular homeostasis like angiotensinogen. Uh, again, that is a good guy. Adiponectin is another good guy because it's the, the presence of it, it actually has an anti-inflammatory action in our body. And obviously some of them play as a sympathetic uh, innovation like um, nerve growth factors. And obviously some of them play as acute phase uh, proteins like uh, hepatoglobin and serum amyloid uh, amylase. So all these kind of adipokines, so these adipokines are proteins which are secreted by this uh, fat cell. So this is why for me as a clinician, I do not only look at an individual which basically accumulating fat, but I really do look at these markers. So for me, when I do a blood test, I look at some of the markers which could give me an, a, 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 an idea of 
if the patient has inflammation as well as obesity. Do you get that? So this is really important and this is what I wanted to highlight and you could see, look at that, you could see that adiponectin, which is that is the good guy which improve insulin sensitivity and glucose uptake it actually reduce its low in obesity so as we get obese that will reduce because obviously as we get obese we could have problems with our insulin sensitivity so we become insulin resistant and and so on but these are, you know, the, how are some of our adipokines really? So adipokines are the proteins which are secreted through that fat, really play a role in, in different parts of our body. Uh, so obviously, one of the things that I do ask patients and individuals is sometimes, you know, go and do a lot of exercise do some uh you know uh, sports and really all these kind of things that i'm i'm advising is due to what we call beijing the adipocytes so sometimes we could change the white adipocytes you know this fat cell to more a brownish color and by browning these adipocytes, we are changing the functionality of white adipocytes to more a beige and browning. So that how can you do this is through uh, an exercise, through a specific kind of uh, cold exposure if you are exposed to a cold uh, environment or, as I said, exercise will lead to the browning and the beijing, let's say, of our adipocytes, okay? So we could, by doing some kind of activity, could actually reduce that fat, that white fat, and change it to a more brown or beige adipocytes to actually have uh, the functionality of that white uh, uh, fat to change to its beige and to a browning so it becomes more of a good fat let's say and this is here just to show you that for us to get this adipocytes there are a many kind of factors which play a role and sometimes as a treatment we target these factors to basically uh, could stop these kind of factors where you could uh, see like a, a binding proteins, which we call them C-enhancing binding proteins here, or we have what we call a peroxisome uh, proliferation activation receptors here. You could see that, guys, and these guys help in the differentiation from, you know, a stem cell and pre-adipocytes to a big fat adipocytes itself. Okay, so sometimes we could target these markers and these receptors to actually maintain our uh, fat deposition in our body. So, why I'm talking about obesity, and obviously, you know, that lengthy talk about the different type of uh, fats that we have in our body, and now we appreciate we have a, a brown fat, which is, I would say, I, I would call it more the good fat, and the white fat, despite it leads to obesity, but it has a plethora of other functionality. As I said, essential fat is always important, but what are the complications that could, um, can we actually get because of obesity? So uh, that could include obviously cardiac, uh, coronary heart disease and cardiac problems, uh, include dyslipidemia, hypertension, atherosclerosis, uh, obviously diabetes, could sit there, uh, stroke, so cataract could lead to that, and sometimes pulmonary diseases. Obviously, if there is a high level of fat, it will actually interfere with our respiration and the way we, we breathe in and out. So it up, 
there will be an obstructive of um, of our breathing and it could actually lead us to some what we call uh, unable to sleep insomnia or sleep apnea okay uh, other problems like cancers so breast cancers in female is the most common due to obesity and obviously prostate cancer is one other cancer which is very common in male with obesity but other cancers could actually be due to you know the obesity itself however there are some kind of liver diseases or fatty liver diseases could be due to the obesity itself uh, 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 osteoarthritis and you know that pain in the joints and uh, uh, um, unable to walk or unable to deal with all the normal activities that we do in a norm in a daily basis could be affected due to obesity but it could give us other uh, complications uh, in in a, you know in a female with the abnormal menses and uh, becoming infant infertile due to polycystic ovary syndrome and sometimes it could uh, lead to other complications that uh, basically could be a longer uh, long life complications really so one of the problems that could be related to obesity is hypertension and 43 percent of obese men and 37 percent of obese uh, women uh, have hypertension compared to uh, patients with a normal uh, BMI. So the higher the BMI, which basically, uh, you know, we're getting to overweight and obesity could lead to hypertension. Okay, so hypertension is a big, big taboo related to obesity. Diabetes, absolutely so it seems that you know if you are comparing adults with a normal or desirable kind of uh, you know bmi they they could have diabetes only 22% of them but patients or, or people with obesity could uh, have diabetes around 11% with the high bmi Okay, and believe it or not, diabetes, people are diagnosed with diabetes has increased by 60% in our last decades. And that is due to obviously many factors to it, but obviously all the, uh, the diet around us and uh, which leads to obesity, it, it could, uh, you know, be the reason for us to, to uh, have diabetes. But apart from the diabetes itself, there is that pre-diabetes and the pre-diabetes is the alarming effect and, um, you know, it's the higher risk of going on to actually get diabetes uh, and it all depends on where are we sitting in terms of our body mass index and how are we dealing with the nutrients that we are having in our daily basis okay uh, it, so for us when we get to that stage we could have the ability to deal with this by uh, you know losing weight or by changing our lifestyle uh, which is basically by doing some exercise and so on okay so these are some of the factors as i said but obviously other risk for obesity as i said you, apart from the uh, hypertension you know heart diseases stroke uh, cancers and above all depression and stress could be a leading factor for many people uh, with obesity uh, could actually uh, go downhill so Nowadays, when I'm dealing with obese individual, I don't only think about the nutrients and the exercise. I really look at the psychological factor, which could contribute to many adverse effects and risk.
for obesity okay so as i said um, you know that needs to be highlighted as well in terms of the depression which could be uh, associated with obesity itself but otherwise we spoke about the arthritis itself the osteoarthritis uh, uh, and other problems like you know the asthma and the abnormal breathing and the obviously uh, the issue with the sleeping sleeping apnea so they can't sleep because of of obesity itself so how can i deal with the situation how can i uh, deal with this situation okay yes i'm gonna start weight loss is it as simple as that i don't know what you think guys but weight loss by itself uh, and you know reducing diet and so it's not the whole uh issue to be tackled so it is widely recognized that obesity and tackling weight loss can also be heavily linked to psychological problem affecting the patient so there is that depression as i said the stress which is leading to that factor okay at obviously the clinical practice they help to support the patient and they could refer them not only for dietetic uh, and nutritionists but actually to psychologists uh, as well to make sure that they are entwined to tackle the issue itself okay so as we said yes diet play a big role and 26 percent of adults ate the recommended of five or more portion of fruit and vegetables a day and you could see that women uh, were more uh, likely to do so so you know if we have women and men uh, in our in our cohort 27 percent women and 24 percent men were uh, take in that five a day a portion of fruits and vegetables and it seems that for sure uh, poor diet and nutrition are recognized at, um, as a major contributor to our risk factors for ill health and pre uh, kind of mature uh, death for patients with obesity okay so where do i start how can i start and what diet do i start so i don't know if you know the difference in different diets but there are people who use uh you know uh, paleo uh, diet which is basically uh, it's considered as oh yeah i'm gonna uh, eat more fruit vegetable meat fish eggs and nuts and seeds so all these things are part of our paleo uh, diet so it's uh, it's more related to more proteins less carbs and yeah that could be one of the diets that you, you use then we have what we call a cambridge diet so the cambridge diet here you have um, a very low calorie diet so for it for example people uh, get four four hundred to a 1500 of their calories uh, basically consumed with a specific replacement diet so around 1500 of their calorie daily calories is basically replaced with a specific diet and that could come in a sashes in a in a bars where the the, the individuals will eat and uh, could lower their diet there is another diet called the South Beach diet, which actually that emphasized the, uh, you know, lower car carbs and more proteins and obviously healthy fat. So this healthy fat include unsaturated fat, which you find it in olive oil, in peanuts, in uh, olives themselves, in affogado and, uh, you know, nuts and so. So this is important to to consider like what diet do i go with yeah what diet do i consider to to lose weight and some some of them 
actually could be a trial and error but sometimes it's a lengthy process it's not a a a day kind of thing situation where you have that diet and you think uh, things is going to change and I always like you to consider the portion size in a plate is the size matter and the portion matters as well because obviously if I'm living in the U UK compared to living in the USA or living in United Arab Emirates the portion size is interchangeable and it's different I've seen massive portions in 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 America compared to uh, you know different uh, countries, and this is so important to maintain this as well. Obviously, sometimes uh, apart from the diet, you could you know join uh, some of the uh, uh, slimming group, and that slimming group I don't know uh, we what we call it Weight Watchers or uh, you know Slimming World, which are so important to to maintain what diet, and it's basically a con uh, um, a diet which is optimized. Uh, for uh, and customized for each individual patient going through what they eat in a in a daily basis and uh, what can we basically shift or uh, change to get the right proper calories for these individuals okay uh, and obviously apart from that sometimes healthcare assistants are there to to support the patient through that weight uh, loss uh, journey because i do call it a journey is not only one theme to it and it's not only the diet to it but really it's really the the activity and enhancing the activity uh, you know 26% of our adults in our life they are classified as inactive and obviously fewer than 30 minutes physical activity uh, you know a week could uh, it's not enough you know so you need to consider how can I actually enhance the activity so less active and less fit, uh, fit people have a greater risk of developing a high blood pressure and obviously it seems that physically activity can reduce the risk of type 2 diabetes and actually studies has shown that physically active people are less likely to have coronary heart disease uh, than those which are inactive uh, individuals so what kind of exercise do i do i am a great believer of people who could actually walk simply walk I don't know if you do walking, but in here, in this country now, nowadays, the weather is amazing. It's really something, uh, you know, where you could actually start walking uh, and simply walk. You know, give yourself half an hour walk a day. Uh, that will definitely, and a study last year has shown it will reduce the, the uh, adverse effect in terms of diabetes and hypertension, okay? Sometimes you could actually brisk 10 minutes daily walk, you know, that, that quick walk, not that, you know, a simple walk. So you're walking, but it's more brisk walking. And that could benefit towards, uh, you know, your exercise of our 150 minutes a week of exercise. So if we divide 150 by seven, uh, you know, because obviously in our week, we have uh, seven days. Uh, let me make the calculation. So that tells you all you need to do is 21 minutes a day in that seven uh, days of our week, okay? Sometimes, you know, more walking could be boring. Sometimes it's good good to join that local uh, kind of uh, healthy walks that happens within your community, within your uh, within your uh, uh, basically uh, I don't know area that you live in. And I'm I'm sure now I heard in Dubai they are doing these kind of uh, activity. Uh, 
kind of uh, uh, thing that is happening in United Arab Emirates, which is starting from the middle of November until the middle of December, which is something one could actually uh, take part in. Okay, now obviously, you know, sometimes, you know, going to the swim, doing Pilates, uh, stretching, going to a dance class, all these things will definitely help in our, uh, um, uh, you know, in our health and uh, definitely reduce that obesity that we are all worried from. So, for us, you know, patients in primary care, we help and support patient who wants to lose weight and become more active. That is not alone, but we need to monitor their progress. It's not a, a short period of a situation. It's a long life situation that we need to monitor the progress. And sometimes we need to refer patients to uh, weight loss and active programs and as i said we need to customize some of the uh, diet accordingly to each individual uh, patients and their needs sometimes we may need uh, the use of medication uh, but some medication could actually lead to uh, some kind of uh, side effects so uh, I, I don't know if you know of the uh, Orula state, which is basically one of the um, weight loss uh, pills that is used, is 120 milligrams capsules. Uh, it, it affects absorption of fat from the gut, but it could cause diarrhea and some uh, cramps and, uh, you know, uh, uh, some effects to the patients, which sometimes they dislike it. So from patient to a patient, it could differ. Then we have a GLP-1 agonist, and that is the new kid in the block. I, I hear there are a lot of people are using it as an agonist, uh, which medication could use as an injection. And can you be used for diabetic patients to improve their blood glucose and control, uh, you know, uh, their weight in terms of losing weight. So basically, it, it lowers our blood sugar postprandial. So after we consume our meal, it will lower the blood sugar at there. And there is obviously many, many kind of generic names to it, many brands that you could find. And it is something I've just heard in, in United Arab Emirates has been used and it's shown some kind of uh, a good, uh, good relation uh, or good uh, kind of um, effect on, on people in, in losing their weight. But it may uh, definitely, definitely help in diabetes uh, uh, improvement. Obviously, sometimes we may depends on the patients and if they are uh, morbidly uh, kind of obese, uh, we may consider surgery. Uh, you know, uh, these surger surgeries we call it a pediatric kind of surgery or metabolic surgery, which is some sometimes used as a treatment for people which are very very who are very obese but obviously it's a major op op uh, operation and could actually uh, most cases should only considered after trying to lose weight through the healthy diet and exercise okay uh, but as a, a an evidence this kind of operation could lead to significant weight loss and help in improving many um, obesity related conditions such as uh, type 2 diabetes and high blood pressure. So it has it good and it has it, it bad, but uh, obviously we never, uh, let's say, uh, advertise for, for, for these kind of operations unless we go through the, the normal consideration of lo lo loss, losing weight through the healthy diet and exercise rather than uh, going straight to the knife. So when we talk about, you know, the, the, how we consider
psychologists and you have the physicians which is the gps as well and you have the sport trainers as well all these th all these guys will work together to maintain the the you know they they patient's well-being and as i said it's not only about the diet it's not only about the exercise and doing the sport itself it's about the psychology factor to it and obviously we are all different individuals and when we are different so they the diet and the calories that we need to maintain and how much we could uh, take in and how much exercise we need to do in a daily basis it will differ as well okay so this is just to show you really uh, what we use in terms of thinking about assessing uh, individuals and we do an assessment appointment for an individual then we uh, consider uh, you know a specialist advice from a nutritionist or dietetic then we have a psychological uh, therapy which um, help there in in maintaining individual group there is obviously uh, the healthy training to support uh, the motivation and self-esteem really and obviously there is the exercise professionals which assess uh, within their on-site either gym or small groups or so and obviously as we said we need to maintain and uh, create a programs for individual uh, patients or individual person according to how much they need exercise within 12 weeks and we need to monitor that uh, sometimes some patients possibly need their physiotherapy occupational therapy and uh, you know maybe the need of uh, um, you know practitioner uh, you know gp or physicians to actually uh, maybe add some uh, medication to that so you could see that cycle of how to deal with obesity is not one single thing but i would say diet and exercise is a good starting point uh, and obviously maintaining that healthy uh, lifestyle is a really good uh, kind of way uh, to deal with and really we've done some kind of um, relying on all that what i've shown you the cycle but it seems like it's working after 12 months of going through and i'm talking about an obese people which are uh, morbidly obese pa patients so their weight has reduced 11 kilos okay their body mass index re reduced from 43 to 35 which is amazing and their blood pressure has reduced as well Obviously, it seems with patients like that, they have the ability to regain this kind of weight if they are not careful and stick into their regime. And it seems that after two to four years, they could actually go back to, uh, you know, to their uh, original weight, uh, which is, you know, uh, could be, um, uh, you know not good results for any individual so how do we do that by increasing exercise by increasing the quality of life uh, improving in di uh, diabetes and obviously we have to think about that five a day as i said five a day five kind of elements including uh, uh, fruits and vegetables uh, will help for sure this is to tell you that yes now uh, fat itself could be a bad thing but actually nowadays they are changing uh, the uh, the adipocytes to its original which is a, a stem cell so they are finding now cell-based therapy is the way to treat uh, obesity and other complications and other risk factors and this is what we call adipose derived mesenchymal stem cells and they are uh, seen they have a advantages to minimize any immunogenicity and they highly immunoregulation for uh, many clinical uh, issues so 
yes, apart from you know the diet and uh, the surgery that we spoke about and the exercise, there is that cell uh, therapy, and it seems like these kind of uh, potential therapeutic application for adipose. Uh, uh, sorry, derived stem cells could help in diabetes, in obesity itself, in um, you know uh, uh, liver diseases, which is you know not uh, non fatty uh, liver diseases, uh, vascular disorders like hypertension, atherosclerosis, insulin resistance, and even infertility. But it's still early days in that. But it is giving us a good, a good kind of uh, uh, potential in terms of uh, its therapeutic agents. So as a conclusion, we'll go back. Obesity is a complex chronic disease with severe co uh, causes that lead to excessive body fat and sometimes poor health. Body fat itself, it's not a disease, but the body has too much extra fat, which could change the functionality of this cells. And as I told you, I consider it as a mild chronic inflammation and this is alarming for me so the combination of programs that focus on low calorie diet adequate exercise and physical exercise and psychotherapy include you know the greatest weight loss in patient with obesity uh, and definitely with any related complications like diabetes, blood pressure, and uh, cancers, and you name them. Obviously, as I said, there is that newcomer of a, a adipose-derived stem cells, which has a promising kind of potential as a therapeutic strategy to treat some of the diseases, including obesity itself uh, and its complications like type 2 diabetes, fatty liver, um, non-alcoholic fatty liver and obviously cardiovascular diseases and other other complications so thank you very much and i hope i did not uh, make it so not interesting <laughs> thank you thank you so much dr soha it was really uh, interesting and a lot of good information that will help us all yeah. to improve our lifestyle and uh, manage to follow a healthy lifestyle yeah um so now if um ha if someone have any questions you could ask in a chat and then dr soha could read it or uh, yeah if yeah you have anything you can you just want to add up you are really welcome uh, am I still sharing? Because I want to stop sharing. Am I? Still... Yeah, uh, no, you stopped sharing already. Oh, fantastic, fantastic. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah. I just want to make sure. Do you want me to put my camera on or not? I'm happy it's to. It's up do... to you, as yeah? you like. <laughs> okay, thank you. So, if someone have any questions, you are welcome to ask. <clears throat> So is there any, thank you, doctor, thank you. Yeah, you could ask in yeah. Arabic and hopefully I'll get, I'll get there. Yes, yes. You could, you could use the microphone if you like, yes. Uh, Nuha, um, I have the mic, you can ask. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. عليكم السلام ورحمة الله. هاي. أنا من عمري 14 سنة لين وصلت 38 وأنا مع الدايت وأنواعه. سنة 2018 بطلت أسوي دايت وداعاً للدايت. أوكي. لكن أنا لاحظت خلال هالسنوات كلها أن يغفلون عن الجانب النفسي في الموضوع. يس. وايد يعني أنا اكتشفت أن فيني الأكل العاطفي. أنا حزينة بروح آكل. أنا ما أدري شو بروح بتجه للطعام. لكن في في ضعف في ما بقول لها ولكن جد انا لاحظت خلال هالسنوات كلها في ضعف في في التنبيه من ناحيه الاكل العاطفي، كيف انا اغير بسلوكي من من الاتجاه للطعام لين شيء اخر، مشي رياضه، سباحه، فضفضه، استشاره، في وايد حلول. ابسوليوتلي جد والشيء الثاني انا الاحظ دائما مثلا في في عملات قص المعده دخلوهم على دكتور نفسي، 
الزين ليش ما يكون في حق اللي بتسوي دايت ترى بعد مثلا تحب الكيك تحب الكاكاو لكن تحسي في الدايت محرومه مسكي هذا الجدول روحي طبقي شكرا جزيلا انا ما آلة انا انسان انا نفس فهذا جد انا انا خلال 24 سنه هذه اللي اللي كنت اسوي فيهم دايت سعرات حراريه تبديل وجبات ببعض العصائر مثلا طبعا كلها بالمستشفيات او عيادات خاصه وصلت لمرحله الابر بعد بس قالوا لي قص معده قلت لهم ستوب لان هني انا ما بقص قص معده لان اصلا اذا ما غيرت تفكيري حتى لو قصيت معدتي ما راح ما راح يعني راح تكون صح حل بس ما حل دائم مثل ما ما Very well said. I don't know. You, you've been cut, uh, Miss Nuha. Hello, do you hear me? Yes, I hear you. I'm with the teacher that said that it's a change in lifestyle. And the nice thing is that it's not only a routine to go to the gym. There's more than that. So I'm between myself and myself. I've reached 122. And I'm still in the room. And I have a lot of pain in the room. تسمع الصوت ولا انقطع؟ نو وي هير يصير ورد زين ف يعني ابي ابدي دايت مع نفسي بس ما ابي ادخل جروب ما ابي اروح مستشفى لان سيدي بيقول لي روحي قصي معده انت فيش دهون على الكبد يعني جربت كذا مستشفى انت روحي قصي معده عندش دهون على الكبد انت روحي يعني كيف اقول في خاطري اسوي شيء لنفسي بس بطريقه صحيحه ما اعرف من وين ابدي امم ما أدري فهمت عليه سمو حيان. Yeah, no, thank you very much. Thank you. I I did understand. I think honestly your approach is the right approach. Like obviously sometimes you do not want to go and see uh, their physician to actually go under the knife. I'm I'm against that. And I as I said, really, whatever your weight is, for me, importantly are you do you have inflammation or not and when i say inflammation is the markers that i look at including all the inflammatory markers do you know what inflammation in arabic i'm not sure how i say it in arabic um what is inflammation in arabic anyone can help me um uh, uh inflammation uh i don't know how to say it in arabic but it's like there are markers which shows like it's becoming uh oh yeah hey, yeah yeah thank you Ib thank you ibrahim that is the word that is the word thank you so much so inflammation is that is what i'm worried about as i said sometimes if we have a lot of subcutaneous you know what subcutaneous fat is the fat which is uh, you know that superficial fat what worries me, Nuha, is what they, their visceral fat. And the visceral fat is the one which we need to worry about. You know, the, the fat which we can't see, but it's surrounding our uh, stomach, it's surrounding our liver, it's surrounding our heart, it's surrounding that. And this is the bad, bad, bad fat. The, the subcutaneous, which, okay, I look big, I look huge, but actually, I'm not inflamed. I don't have inflammation, inflammatory markers. Okay. Uh, so this is so important to to know the difference. Uh, do you have that inflammation? That, secondly, Nuha, I think you are your approach is good. The diet within the calories, yes. And do you look at portions as well? The size, the portion size, Nuha. هلا استاذه بس ممكن اخر اخر كلمه قلتيها ما انتبهت ما سمعت لها. I said do you do you have do you look at uh, the size portion the portion of the the size of your portion do you consider that do you look at when you eat let's say when you uh, when you you know manage your food or create your meal do you think about the size how big is that size of my portion? ايوه نعم Yes, fantastic. Yeah. Because this is so important. This is so important. Doing the exercise is important. And honestly, I can't agree more with you in terms of the psychological effect and the psychological uh, eating. And actually, I am now with my PhD student is doing a research on uh, how come people get 
obesity and the risk factor because some obese people are self-harming do you get you know what self-harming is <laughs> so they <laughs> yes they <laughs> eat <laughs> yes they eat because they are harming themselves and uh, you know it happens in teenagers it happens in in people when they go th through stress and this is what we need to approach and this is why i think i need, i think uh, ms nuha if you co go to psychologist that will be a good starting point and leave everything else for a later stage okay seriously go to a psychologist it's we all need a psychologist wherever we are i go to a psychologist just because i want a bit of motivation i need a self-esteem so really going to a psychologist will definitely help in uh, controlling that why and what and how can I change that habit from approaching that meal into approaching something else? Okay. And it's not a stigma if we go to psychology, it's not a stigma. Uh, really, I lived all my life in the United Kingdom and going to a psychology is not a stigma. So please, please do not worry about approaching and approaching right and as i said is a multidisciplinary kind of a thing rather than it's a one single person uh, issue thank you so much doctor for uh, really well explaining anyone have any other question Oh, thank you. Welcome. If you had any questions for the doctor. And I, I, I need to thank a lot of people here from Shams and Ibrahim and Ibrahim. You know, they know what inflammation is. And it seems like it's so important. And I think the people, uh, when they think they are obese, they just worry about, okay, it's the fat accumulation. I need to highlight the importance of inflammation. And that is a, the bigger the bigger kind of, uh, you know, elephant in the room. There is a question in the chat, uh, yes. Dr. Tse, how can I know that I am genetically obese? Oh, yes. So how I'm genetically, there is obviously, I don't know if you know, but there is like these kind of new techniques that it could give you a specific gene and the gene we call OB, OB gene. So we could detect that gene, this specific OB, OB gene, okay? And that gives us that, am I genetically obese or not? So you could look uh, at your genetic uh, kind of picture. And that is done through DNA and RNA, uh, you know, gene expression. And I think nowadays, uh, I think in United Arab Emirates is available nowadays or maybe a kit that you could buy uh, uh, through online, I think. But it gives you that, you know, it's not only your ancestors, but it will give you if you have any genetic factors and that gene called OB, OB gene. So you can, you can through a blood test uh, looking at DNA uh, sampling. Okay, blood test or even sometimes even if you don't want it invasive, you could actually get it from your saliva. It's a DNA. Do you get that? Yes, yeah, so we yeah. could detect it if there is a genetic uh, and there are a genetic markers which could give us, um, you know, an indication if you are genetically obese. Okay. And I think also doctor it's used for uh, to detect all, all genetic uh, diseases like uh, diabetes and other kind of diseases. And actually it could give us an indication of 
our future you mm. know maybe in 10 years time i could uh, develop a, a problem or an issue related it can it can mm. so these are uh, you know good ideas but i'm not sure how expensive they are here and how available are they Mm -hmm. um, but this is part of what we call it uh, pernicious uh, medicine, pernicious medicine, which is mm -hmm. play a big role in our genetic factors and so Factors. And it's definitely, definitely measurable, measurable. Recently in government clinics, they are taking uh, like it's a, a voluntary if someone want to uh, participate a blood um, a sample of blood test uh, and there is a, like a study of uh, UAE genome something like that there you go yeah and then uh, later on it's used to improve the system of the health something like that but I, I'm not sure if they will share the results right yeah. now or inflammation or if there is any issues it's yeah. just used for a study for now it's like yes. a testing part. but yeah. you know something whoever is involved in the study could request for their results at a later stage when yeah. the results are all uh, gathered together that so there's maybe, a possibility yeah. Yeah. but i think uh, you know there are some kind of clinics which mm -hmm. they they are specialized in these genetics uh, mapping and, uh, you know, cross. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, 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 exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there is no more questions oh, and we are out of time. Oh, no, and, no. Uh, I would like to thank you again, uh, Dr. Suha, oh, for an interesting session. And oh, thank, thank you, you for all of us for attending. Uh, I linked the evaluation link in the chat. So if you can fill it up uh, so you can get your certificates as soon as possible. Uh, and thank you again for everyone and thank you doctor for your time uh, do i need to fill that evaluation as well or no uh, need? no doctor you would <laughs> yeah because yours. you know that will <laughs> yeah. be biased isn't it <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely okay thank you so okay. much and lovely you, to meet sir. you all and all the best and if you need actually to contact me please you you just google my name and you will find me as part of university of Sharjah email so please don't hesitate to email me if you like thank you so much for your time thank you so much doctor. Yeah, cheers bye-bye bye see you